I'm Vici Deum, here to go over the top 5 best uses for the Banu Merchantman. The recent CitizenCon footage has transformed the BMM to be arguably one of, if not the most useful ships in all of Star Citizen, confirming over 2800 SCU, a medbay, a hangar, with a 8-shop traveling bazaar, two size 8 pilot-controlled guns, point defense systems for anti-missile, anti-torps, and so, so much more. With this many features, the owner of a Banu Merchantman can take the ship in a number of different directions. I'm going to cover my top 5 best uses for this ship. These are my opinions, but let me know your plans for the BMM in the comments down below. Before we continue, don't forget to sub up to keep up since we're starting right now. Number 5. Combat The BMM would excel in a combat role. While not a dedicated combat vessel, the Merchantman has more than enough at its disposal to prove a lethal threat to most targets it comes across. With two huge size 8 pilot controlled guns, the Merchantman will be a terrifying threat, especially when faced head on. Besides those weapons, the Merchantman has a massive size 5 man top turret and two remote size 4 turrets underneath that are bolstered by four point defense systems designed to eliminate range torpedo and missile threats before they ever become a problem. Additionally, the Merchantman has its own hangar for the Banu Defender. This extra fighter means the Merchantman is never alone, and extends the BMM's offensive and defensive capabilities. Thanks to French T-Girl on Reddit, we have a look at other ships that could fit in that hangar as well. Adding something like a Hurricane would tremendously help against fighter swarms. Alternatively, you could use that hangar to repair and refuel a fleet of ships which would allow them even more utility at least when fighting in a fixed location or within a smaller quantum range. But with this combat prowess established, what can you do in the verse? I see the BMM filling a role assisting large orgs in protecting territories and in Xenothreat type dynamic events where those huge size 8 weapons would be massive. Against the enemy Idris fleet, I could see it being highly profitable and really fun. The BMM fills a variety of space combat missions. For for instance, while starting bounty hunting missions wouldn't be cost effective, I could see the BMM easily running up through VHRT and even ERT Northrock missions for massive profit. For all these reasons, using the BMM for combat takes the number 5 spot in this list. Number 4. Dropship the BMM would make an incredible dropship, and there are several reasons why. First, the BMM has the long-term life support systems in place for large numbers of crew and passengers aboard. Since these capacities could be stretched, you have the possibility of carrying even more people for a shorter duration of time, and I could easily see 50 plus people able to survive at least for several hours aboard the Merchantman. While operating in a dropship capacity, I see the main contingent of of these force seated in their vehicles within the cargo hold. Once landed, I see the first combat team immediately drop down and deploy into the floating cargo pad. Once it returns up to the ship, the next squad can drive their vehicles forward and the process repeats. This could be skipped altogether in space with arrows or snub fighters, which can then fly out from directly inside the hangar through that opening. The Merchantman has plenty of offensive and defensive capacity to secure the landing zone, but I don't see it dropping into a hot LZ. Due to its massive size, rather I see this deploying most successfully right on the periphery of action. For these reasons and more, using the BMM as a dropship is number 4. Number 3. Exploration the BMM would make an excellent exploration ship, but since exploration is more nuanced, it'll benefit to review the qualifications first. To excel at exploration, a ship needs several things. It must have the capacity to go extremely long distances while being self-sufficient in that journey. It must be able to defend itself and keep its goods from being seized by threats, and it must have some medical facility aboard should anything befall the crew. It should also have a snub craft and carry ground vehicles while still allowing you the capacity to carry cargo afterwards. And since the fuel scoop aboard and Banu lore suggests the ship will have tremendous capacity in exploration, I see it having little problem traversing the furthest reaches of the game's verse. The Banu Merchantman does all of that and more. 
The Defender already has best-in-class quantum range, so it's likely the Merchantman will share in that same feature. Since both are derived from the same Banu ship ethos, with medical stations aboard and the capacity to respawn along with that guiding lore, I see the multi-generational home that has developed as the Banu Merchantman extending its capacities deeply within the verse and into combat and game mechanics as well. As a multi-generational home, this ship is used by the Banu race as a flagship explorer. It was Banu explorers who first made contact with humanity. The BMM has plenty of capacity in its cargo hold for vehicles and additional cargo that you may find on your adventures, and the abilities of the Banu Merchantman as a trader only further enhance that feel of exploration by directly interacting with the locals in these otherworldly locations. For all these reasons and countless more, using the Banu Merchantman for exploration takes the number three spot in this list. Number two. Cargo Hauling The Banu Merchantman has over 2,800 SCU of cargo. This makes the BMM one of the largest cargo haulers in the entire game. The current in-game largest cargo hauler, the C2, carries 696 SCU. That means flying the BMM is equivalent to the holds of over four Hercules. That's absolutely insane. While it doesn't carry as much as dedicated haulers like the Hull series, it does have a unique advantage, which I believe makes it even better suited for that role. It doesn't need escorts. While the Hull series relies on the protection of escorts, the BMM's two size 8 weapons, plenty of turrets, and a hangar for its own onboard escort means that the crew of the BMM are essentially self-sufficient, and these profits of protection are kept within the business itself, drastically reducing costs. Additionally, the BMM's defenses are a deterrent itself. It would be less likely for a pirate to attack a would-be BMM target if there was a unprotected or less protected hull series nearby, and you may very well be avoided altogether. Also, due to the unique internal layout of the cargo, it's shielded and armored, unlike the Hull series, which exposes everything externally just within the veil of the shield armor itself, but not within a protected armored hull. This has an added advantage. Additionally, since irregular vehicle shapes like potentially tanks or even in a ballista could fit inside the Banu Merchantman and be loaded in much easier. For these reasons, using the BMM for cargo hauling takes the number two spot on this list. Number one. Trading. The BMM is going to be an amazingly versatile trader. In fact, besides the $2,000 Kraken Privateer, the only option players currently have for directly trading goods in-game is the Banu Merchantman. The BMM has eight shops aboard with two floors and four on each floor. These shops can carry a wide assortment of items and are determined and sourced by the player. I see orgs using this as a dump for players' equipment, which can then be directly turned into profits. You will need to be present and online, however, for the BMM shops to run, but I don't see this being a problem, and I'd personally love to set up some time lapses in the future with people buying and selling goods aboard. Additionally, the BMM can sell directly to its customers using the cargo hold and negotiate from the conference room. The BMM could act as a wartime logistics broker, and I see it securing and delivering weapons, payloads, tanks, or even ballistas into combat situations within the periphery, leveraging war between factions for tremendous profit. The ability and capacity of this ship to act as a traitor is incredible and only matched against a ship much larger and more expensive. Because of the BMM's unique ability to sell within hangars directly, it allows you to sell within cities, which is going to be a tremendously big advantage over the Kraken Privateer. While the Kraken Privateer can go and land at cities, it's gonna be much more difficult to do so, and I imagine it'll be more difficult for a player who won't be able to just jump into a hangar and go right aboard the Merchantman. Additionally, the ability for a merchantman to go fully loaded onto a planet side and then leave is a feature that the Kraken Privateer won't have, which will need the assistance of other vehicles to actually leave a planet's atmosphere if it's fully laden with cargo. For these reasons and more, trading takes the number one spot in this list. But let me know if you have a merchantman below, what are your thoughts and intended uses for this ship? If you don't have a merchantman, do you regret not buying one? What do you think the price will rise up to? 
I'm Vici Dayum. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you're one of the 97% who watch this and aren't subscribed, please consider it. It really does help me out. Thank you all so much. Stay healthy, stay well. I will see you all out there in the verse.